Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. How? Oh, not too long ago, my daughter. Honorable Minister uh, Connie September, uh, Deputy Minister Zokota, Deputy Minister Enver Surti, Deputy Minister Andre Snell, Deputy Minister Joe Parsa, uh, Deputy Minister Franz Mann. It looks like the list is very long. Uh, leader of uh, the ANC in Parliament, Comrade uh, Lynn Brown, and editor, New Age, uh, Moxin Williams. Uh, it is indeed a privilege for, for me to share with you. I see this provincial secretary of the ANC as well here. If uh, there are members of the opposition parties, uh, you're all welcome, and all of you, dear friends. The, this is a very special day for us, uh, the 30th anniversary of the United Democratic Front. Celebrated on the occasion of the centenary of the 1913 Land Act. Uh, there is a, a relationship, a connection between the, the celebration of the anniversary of the ANC, I mean, of, of the UDF, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and the 1913 Land Act. It is particularly so because the UDF was founded on very important, a very important vision contained in the Freedom Charter. One of those uh, elements of the Freedom Charter was the, the question of housing security and comfort, which also has a direct link to the 1913 Land Act because the 1913 Land Act was not just about the dispossession of our people, it also was a precursor to your Race Classification Act, Group Areas Act. It led to massive removals of our people and homelessness of, of, of our people. Uh, in particular in Cape Town here, what was important is that at the time when we were launching the United Democratic Front, Kyle Eicher had also just started. So in a sense, we also celebrate 30 years of that settlement, which at the time was called Kyle Eicher. This occasion therefore present to us an opportunity to ask our, ourselves the question, if in 1983, we fought for the betterment of the lives of the people of Kailicha, the people of Uhudi, the people of Mohopa, the people of Batplas, a whole lot of areas throughout the country. What, how much distance have we traversed in improving the lives of the people of, better, of, of Kailicha and all other parts of our, our country? Last night, Minister Connie September said, as one of the many important uh, priorities we defined before the 1994 election, and as part of the peace accord we signed between, amongst various parties, Nelson Mandela and uh, F.W. de Klerk and uh, Chief Butelezi being the key players there, was the question of making sure that South Africans get houses. People who paid for houses over 40 years or so, 30 years, needed to have those houses transferred to them so that South Africans can show that they own something in the land of their birth. A number of major cities have done so in the country. I know Johannesburg, where I come from, they have done so. In the Northwest, we have done so. Various other provinces have done so. I would imagine that here too, we should have made progress in that regard. 
but I'm not an expert in that regard. It's a question we must ask today. Have we made that progress? But what does the occasion of the celebration of the UDF represent? Uh, the UDF represented a very, uh, the formation of the UDF represented a very important uh, uh, vision. The destruction of a divisive system of apartheid and the creation of a new society that was unifying South Africa. The nature of the UDF itself represented a new society, an embryo. Was the UDF was, in a sense, an embryo of the society that we were building. We had diversity of views. We had a minimum program we agreed on that apartheid must end. A constitution that excluded the majority of our people cannot be acceptable to our people. That we needed universal franchise for our people, universal suffrage where all South Africans would vote. But it also represented free movement for our people. That's why we insisted that the racial patterns of human settlement should come to an end and we should build integrated communities. The manner in which we do town planning, we should bring our people closer to places where they work, they should be closer, our children should be closer to their schools. When I grew up, I had to work every day, more than 15 kilometers to go to school and back as a youngster. We wanted to end that experience so that our people could begin to live normal life, integrated community lives, have clinics, have churches, have schools in the areas, mosques in the areas where, where they lived. That transport should not be something that made workers deep, deeper into their pockets every month, but by the month, when the month ends, they've got nothing. A rental that was escalating all the time. We wanted to fight all those things. And we succeeded in bringing, uh, Peter, I thought we, in my records as the General Secretary of the United Democratic Front, I had 578 organizations that gathered here at, uh, at Mitchell's Plain. So, so the UDF represented the hope of that new South Africa uh, to, to our people. But that hope was a hope engenders by the values and perspectives of the, the Freedom Charter. But one thing that was also good about the United Democratic Front was that we wanted to make sure that the traditions of our struggle were not lost to generations that came. So we, we took from the generations that came before us those values and traditions we carried them further, and we inspired communities, youngsters, youth congresses, student organizations throughout the country to, to embrace those values and to respect them. We respected the symbols of resistance, the symbol of our struggle. Oscar Mpad, Mama Zetlangu, here, Mildred Lysia, Christmas Tinto. We brought in people like Joseph Marx, Wilfred Rhodes, around this area, who built that movement of our people. From KwaZulu Natal, Achigumede, uh, Griffiths Mklenge, in Johannesburg, in the, in the Transvaal, Mama Albertina Sisulu, uh, Edgar Ngoi in the Eastern Cape brought in people like Steve Chwete and so on. Peter Nchabeleng in Limpopo, what is Limpopo today? To say to our people, these are our leaders. They carried, they are the embodiment of the visions and values and the aspirations of the people of, of our country. We never sought to promote personality cult but we wanted to respect the leaders who sacrificed and worked for us. They were banned, but we unbanned them. Uh, Ma Francis Bart, 
uh, Francis Barth, who was also a great leader in the labor movement, who brought as a patron of the United Democratic Front. There's a whole lot of them that we brought into this movement. Dr. Esop Jassat. So we, 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 and then bear us not dear. We, 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 uh, 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 Helen Joseph. We built this massive, massive movement. When people looked at the UDF, they said, but this is us. The people of Mitchell's Plain, when they looked at the UDF, they said, this is us. People of Kailisha, they say, I won't walk one. Although later he, 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 he left us. He left us. But at that time, he came to join the UDF. He was one of us. Traditional leaders, everybody. So, so we were building this massive unity of our people because that was the only way we could begin the foundations of the creation of a new South Africa that we sought uh, to build. And I'm 30 years later when I sit here in front of you, I stand here very pleased with the achievements of the United Democratic Front. Uh, yes. Comrade Dagmar Cameron, uh, Len Brown, Minister Connie September, a whole lot of this uh, Mohsin Williams, Mohsin Williams, <laughs> Mohsin Williams, uh, Joe Partha, Zou, uh, Zora Ibrahim, Zou Kota, all these people are activists of the United Democratic Front. Universities are headed by them. Derek Swartz, if you think of uh, uh, the University of Fort Hare and so on. All over, the UDF made a massive contribution uh, uh, to the creation and sustenance of these institutions. Uh, Lichisa Tsenudi, who is now the Minister of, uh, of Cooperative uh, governance and traditional leaders is from the United Democratic Front. In many ways, sometimes you forget, people say, yeah, but you know, they have sidelined the UDF and so on. The UDF is not there. They mean Terra Legoda and Popo Muleva are not seen in high positions. But the reality is that there are many, many activists of the UDF. It was a mass movement. The UDF was a people. And we understood that time that we didn't depend on one or two individual leaders. And that's why we constantly said that UDF unites, apartheid divides, that the masses of our people are the makers of history. We wanted to build that unity in action. That's, that's what we, we, we wanted to do over those years. And that's what we have done. Are we? Are we still true to those values? That spirit of sacrifice, commitment that characterized our participation in the struggle for freedom, in the creation of UDF, is it still there? Do we still have the tolerance of the diversity, the plurality of views within our organizations and institutions, we, do we still have that? Do we understand that when we create a, a democracy, it meant that people should feel free to challenge the things that they do not believe in, the, that they don't agree with? But do we also understand that when we have challenged things in our structures, in parliament, in institutions, and we lost the argument there. We don't continue that argument beyond the forums where we debated them and lost the argument. <laughs> Do we understand that when you participate in an election, you're not going to an election, agree that there is this election that is going to take place. When you lose, you say, no, I don't accept the outcome. You should not say so. It is not correct. Um, so, 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 so the UDF has taught us this very important values. When I closed the last meeting of the United Democratic Front, the NGC of the UDF, it was held in Guandebele. One of the things that I said was that 
The UDF spent many years calling for the unbanning of the ANC, for the release of Nelson Mandela, for the unbanning of all other political parties. They have now been unbanned. We are now closing the UDF down so that we bought the ANC that represented the aspirations of our people so that that vision of the Freedom Charter with the support of the masses that the United Democratic Fund had mobilized could be used to board the United, Demo uh, the, the United Non-Racial, Non-Sexist South Africa. And I said, we carry these values of the UDF into the ANC that we are becoming part of. Have we lived true to those commitments that we made? Are we doing so today? Are we bold enough to confront the wrong things that might be happening in any party that is there? We need to deal with those questions, confront those questions. As far as the labor movement is concerned, I know many people keep saying, the working class this, the working class this. The UDF was central to building the labor movement in this country. We were members of the General and Allied Workers Union with uh, Sidney Mufamadi, Samson Doe, many other people. Ino Godongwani was were in the East End. Other unions. We worked hard with SAU, uh, African Food and Canning Workers Union. Worked hard to bring together the people. Kosatu of today is a product of relentless effort of members of the United Democratic Front to unite the working class in this country. We tolerated a lot of difficult situations those days. Workerish tendencies, people say, no, we want an independent workers party. We don't need uh, this petty bourgeois organizations, uh, nationalist organizations like the ANC, the UDF, and so on. We were patient with the people to persuade them to understand that the building of a new South Africa is not going to depend on a small radical group of people who read a lot of Marxist-Leninist literature, who, 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 who do not have an understanding, who, re, who don't relate it to the praxis of the experiences of our people. That was the, the United Democratic Front of those days. And I think, Peter, uh, the, the challenge that we must send to our, uh, pose to our people is to seriously and critically consider whether in the current period we have lived up to the expectations of our people and the promises that we made to our people. If we are not, why are we not doing so? Uh, there are many mistakes we make, but in a revolution there will always be mistakes. We must correct them. We must be bold enough to correct them. And as leaders, comrades, I think it is important that when we get criticized, we must not behave as if people don't have the right to criticize us. We must never say to them, I am in power, who are you to tell me what to do? We must, in our appointments to offices, people say there should be no cadre deployment. There must be cadre deployment. Because you, you want people to advance the agenda of transformation. But it, it, the, uh, the cadre deployment cannot be done in a manner that does not take into account the necessary skills, the discipline of our people. It cannot be done on mere sentimentality that this, I like him, he was my comrade, and so on. It must be because that person will deliver to the, to, to our, the needs of our people. The report of the Auditor General suggests that there's a lot of work that we have to do to correct things at local level. We have to do so. 
It doesn't mean that uh, we are not doing our work. We have done a lot. I know now that the, the millions of, uh, you know, more than a million houses, two million houses built for our people since we took over. When we did an analysis before the formation of the United Democratic Front, and we were looking at the period uh, 1968 to 1983, we could see only 10,000 houses built by the former regime at the time. 10,000 houses nationwide. But today we're talking million of the, uh, millions of houses, so we've made progress. But we can do better. We, 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 we can do better, Comrade Corney. Uh, people tell me, your department, but you were not in office. At some point, I had to return more than 400, uh, uh, four, 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 more than 40 billion. Uh, rent of 43 billion of his budget to Treasury. I don't know if it is true, but that's what, that's what they say. They, they say so, but may, may, maybe it's not true, but the Auditor General would know. Uh, we, we, have to, we have to commit to spending the resources that are appropriated by Parliament for programs in government to achieve these priorities that we have defined. That's how we'll create jobs, that's how we deliver services to our people. You won't have people standing on the highways here throwing night soil at cars and throwing night soil at parliament. We, mu we must do our work so that those things don't happen. Thank you very much, sir, because I'm not sure how long you want me to stand. Thank you. you can take the seat there. <laughs>